Fecal vowel incontinence. Definition. Vowel incontinence is the inability to control the vowel movements, resulting in the involuntary passage of stools. Types. Urged vowel incontinence. Sudden need to defecate, with often fecal matter is discharged from rectum despite attempt to retain. Passive incontinence or soling. Experience of no sensation before leakage of stools. Etiology. The most common cause of vowel incontinence is damage to the muscles around the anus, anal sphincters. Vaginal childbirth can damage the anal sphincters or their nerves. That's why women are affected by accidental vowel leakage about twice as often as men. Anal surgery can also damage the anal sphincters or nerves, leading to vowel incontinence. There are many other potential causes of vowel incontinence, including Diarrhea often due to an infection or irritable bubble syndrome. Impacted stool, due to severe constipation, often in older adults. Inflammatory bubble disease, Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. Nerve damage, due to diabetes, spinal cord injury, multiple sclerosis, or other conditions. Radiation damage to the rectum, such as after treatment for prostate cancer. Cognitive, thinking, Impairment, such as after a stroke or advanced Alzheimer's disease. Old age, progressive deterioration or weakness of the anal sphincter. Pathophysiology. Clinical features. Involuntary passage of stool. Diarrhea. Abdominal pain. Lower back pain. Bloating. Stomach cramp. Loss of appetite. Insomnia. Emotional effects. Diagnostic Evaluation History Taking Take a history from the person identified to have FE. History taking should include Past Medical Surgical Obstetric and Gynecological History Medications Duration of FE Circumstances of Leak e.g. Cuffing Straining Sense of Urgency Unused Storage Symptoms e.g. Frequency Urgency Psychological and Social History Physical examination, check the strength of the anal sphincter muscle using a gloved finger inserted into the rectum. Digital rectal exam, the physician inserts a gloved and lubricated finger into the rectum to evaluate the strength of sphincter muscles and to check for any abnormalities in the rectal area. Balloon expulsion test, a small balloon is inserted into the rectum and filled with water. Patient will then be asked to go to the toilet to expel the balloon. If it takes longer than 1 to 3 minutes to do so, patient likely has a defecation disorder. Anal manometry, a narrow, flexible tube is inserted into the anus and rectum. A small balloon at the tip of the tube may be expanded. This test helps measure the tightness of anal sphincter and the sensitivity and functioning of rectum. Anorectal ultrasonography, a narrow, wand-like instrument is inserted into the anus and rectum. The instrument produces video images that allow doctor to evaluate the structure of sphincter. Proctography, X-ray video images are made while patient has a bubble movement on a specially designed toilet. The test measures how much stool rectum can hold and evaluates how well the body expels stool. Colonoscopy, a flexible tube is inserted into rectum to inspect the entire colon. Magnetic resonance imaging. MRI and MRI can provide clear pictures of the sphincter to determine if the muscles are intact and can also provide images during defecation, defecography. Management. Eye medical management. Depending on the cause of fecal incontinence, options include antidiarrheal drugs such as loperamide hydrochloride, imodiumadi, and diphenoxylate and atropine sulfate, lomotil. Bulk laxatives such as methylcellulose, Citrusil, and psyllium husk, metamucil, if chronic constipation is causing incontinence. Dietary changes. Type of food and drink affects the consistency of the stools. If constipation is causing fecal incontinence, the doctor may recommend drinking plenty of fluids and eating fiber-rich foods. If diarrhea is contributing to the problem, high-fiber foods can also add bulk to stools and make them less watery. Exercise and other therapies. If muscle damage is causing fecal incontinence, 
the doctor may recommend a program of exercise and other therapies to restore muscle strength. These treatments can improve anal sphincter control and the awareness of the urge to defecate. Options include Biofeedback Specially trained physical therapists teach simple exercises that can increase anal muscle strength. People learn how to strengthen pelvic floor muscles. Sense when stool is ready to be released and contract the muscles if having a bubble movement at a certain time is inconvenient. Sometimes the training is done with the help of anal manometry and a rectal balloon. Bubble training. The doctor may recommend making a conscious effort to have a bubble movement at a specific time of day. For example, after eating. Establishing when patient need to use the toilet can help him gain greater control. Bulking agents. Injections of non-absorbable bulking agents can thicken the walls of anus. This helps prevent leakage. Sacral nerve stimulation, SNS. The sacral nerves run from spinal cord to muscles in pelvis and regulate the sensation and strength of rectal and anal sphincter muscles. Implanting a device that sends small electrical impulses continuously to the nerves can strengthen muscles in the bubble. Posterior tibial nerve stimulation, PTN is tense. This minimally invasive treatment stimulates the posterior tibial nerve at the ankle. It may be helpful for some people with fecal incontinence when done weekly for several months. Vaginal Balloon Eclipse System This is a pump-type device inserted in the vagina. The inflated balloon results in pressure on the rectal area, leading to a decrease in the number of episodes of fecal incontinence. 2. Surgical Management Treating fecal incontinence may require surgery to correct an underlying problem, such as rectal prolapse or sphincter damage caused by childbirth. The options include Sphincteroplasty This procedure repairs a damaged or weakened anal sphincter that occurred during childbirth. The surgeon identify an injured area of muscle and free its edges from the surrounding tissue. They then bring the muscle edges back together and sew them in an overlapping fashion, strengthening the muscle and tightening the sphincter. Treating Rectal Prolapse a rectosal or hemorrhoids. Surgical correction of these problems will likely reduce or eliminate fecal incontinence. Sphincter replacement. A damaged anal sphincter can be replaced with an artificial anal sphincter. The device is essentially an inflatable cuff, which is implanted around anal canal. When inflated, the device keeps the anal sphincter shut tight until you are ready to defecate. To go to the toilet, Patient use a small external pump to deflate the device and allow stool to be released. The device then reinflates itself. Sphincter Repair Dynamic Gracilloplasty In this surgery doctors take the muscle from the inner thigh and wrap it around the sphincter, restoring muscle tone to the sphincter. Colostomy Bubble Diversion This surgery diverts stool through an opening in the abdomen. Doctors attach a special bag to this opening to collect the stool. Colostomy is generally considered only after other treatments haven't been successful. 3. Nursing Management Diagnosis Bubble incontinence related to advancing age diarrhea Related factors Neuromuscular problems Dementia Diabetes mellitus Vaginal delivery Lower motor nerve trauma Multiple sclerosis Muscular dystrophy Myasthenia gravis Spinal cord injury Stroke Musculoskeletal problems Damage to sphincters Fecal impaction Hyperosmolar food or fluid intake Immobility Infection Lack of accessible toileting facilities Long-term laxative use Nerve trauma Pelvic floor relaxation, physical disability, postoperative injuries, radiation to pelvis, defining characteristics. Bubble incontinence is characterized by the following signs and symptoms fecal seepage, undesired leakage of stool after a bubble movement with otherwise normal continence and evacuation, urge incontinence, discharge of feces and flatus in spite of active attempts to retain these contents. Passive incontinence, involuntary passage of feces and flatus without any awareness. Encopresis, 
a term used mostly for fecal incontinence in children. Goals and Outcomes The following are the common goals and expected outcomes for bowel incontinence nursing diagnosis. Patient is continent of stool or reports decreased episodes of bowel incontinence. Patient participates in a daily bowel program until a bowel pattern develops. Patient evacuates a soft, formed stool. Patient verbalizes feelings of self-control regarding bowel movements. Patient verbalizes ways on how to keep bowel movements regular by naming what foods to eat and how much fluids to intake. Nursing interventions for bowel incontinence. The following are the therapeutic nursing interventions for bowel incontinence nursing diagnosis. Nursing interventions. Rational. Provide a high fiber diet under the direction of a registered dietitian unless contraindicated. Insoluble type of fiber promotes the movement of material through the digestive system and increases stool bulk, so it can be of benefit to those who struggle with irregular stools. Bulky stool stimulates peristalsis and expulsion of stool from the bowel. Ensure fluid consumption of at least 3000 ml day, unless contraindicated. This prevents impaction because a moist stool can move through the bowel more easily. If the patient has diarrhea, fluid therapy is vital for volume replacement. Perform removal of fecal impaction manually, if necessary. Presence of fecal impaction can interfere with the establishment of a regular bubble routine. Keep bedside commode and assistive device on site. Immediate access to appropriate toileting facilities reduces unnecessary accidents. Encourage the intake of natural bulking agents to thicken stools. For example, foods such as banana, rice, and yogurt. These foods help provide bulk to the stool by absorbing fluids from the stool. Assist patient for mobility or exercise, if tolerated. Movement and exercise stimulate peristalsis and aid in bubble movement. Create a bubble program. Promoting regular time for bubble elimination prevents the bubble from emptying sporadically. Encourage bubble elimination at the same time each day. Soon after breakfast is the best time because the gastrocolic reflex is stimulated by food or fluid intake. After breakfast or a warm drink, administer a suppository and perform digital stimulation every 10 to 15. For some cases, direct stimulation of the rectal sphincter and lower colon may be needed to initiate peristalsis. Place the patient in an upright position for defecation. Sitting upright with feet flat on the floor promotes muscular movement that aids in defecation. Discourage the use of pads, diapers, or collection devices for long-term management of bubble incontinence. These products can be used on a short-term basis to prevent soling but may irritate the skin in the long run. Use fecal collection systems selectively over pads and diapers. These devices allow for collection and disposal of stool without exposing the perianal skin to stool, odor and embarrassment are controlled because the stool is contained. External anal pouch. This consists of a bendable wafer which has an opening at its center. One side of the wafer adheres to the skin around the anus and the other side is connected to a collection bag. Intra anal stool bag. This is made of latex, 20 cm non-extended. 26 cm extended, that is inserted into the anus and an adhesive attachment, 10 cm in diameter, applied around the anus to secure it in position. Rectal tubes and catheters. These are inserted into the rectum to direct loose stool into a collection bag. A balloon near the tip of the catheter, inside the body, can be inflated once the catheter is in position to block leakage of stool around the catheter and to prevent the tube from coming out throughout a bubble movement. Rectal Trumpets The trumpet is made up of a nasopharyngeal airway connected to a drainage bag. The flange, wide, end of the trumpet is inserted into the rectum. A trumpet is shorter than a rectal tube so there is less chance of damaging the lining of the rectum. The other narrow end of the trumpet can be connected to a drainage bag. Wash the perineal area after each elimination with soap and water. Apply a moisture barrier ointment. Any fecal material left on the skin may cause irritation, skin excoriation, and pain. This pain may result in fear of defecating and cause the patient to deny the urge to defecate. 
This may result in impaction and eventually bowel incontinence. Educate the patient and caregiver the importance of fluid and fiber in maintaining soft, bulky stool. This improves personal efficacy and can enhance compliance and participation with the therapeutic regimen. Educate the caregiver the use of a fecal device, if necessary. This may be challenging but the caregiver has the chance to learn to manage the device with appropriate guidance and feedback. Educate the patient about proper hygiene and the use of soap and water and moisture barrier containing zinc oxide or dimethicone. These prevent skin irritation and pain that may lead to fecal impaction and eventually bowel incontinence. Educate the patient on the importance of establishing a regular schedule for bowel elimination. Knowledge helps the patient and family understand the rationale for treatment and assists the patient in assuming responsibility for self-care later.